Okay, how do I do an intro for this? Usually this is the part where I say, my name's Chris, I'm building a productivity app called Ellie. This time is a little bit different because we're actually talking about a completely different app today. Welcome to the video. If you're new here, my name is Chris and I build productivity apps. If you've seen any of my other videos, it's probably been about the productivity app I'm building called Ellie. It's a daily planning app. You should go check it out. Today's video is not about Ellie though. Today we're gonna be going over the new app I'm building, which is a budgeting app. Since this is the beginning of the app, I wanted to make a quick video outlining, you know, why am I building this? What are my plans? Why do I need a third app? I wanted to make a quick intro video basically for the app. I also want to preface, I plan on making an entire series about this app and building it from scratch. I don't know what I'm going to call it. Maybe like, maybe building Luna or app from scratch or something like that. Let me go answer a couple of questions that you guys are probably going to have about this. Why am I building a budgeting app? First reason, I genuinely need one. I'm spending way too much money eating out, to be honest, and I need something to keep me accountable. I've tried almost every budgeting app on the market and I just haven't stuck with any of them. I'm not going to go too in depth of why I didn't stick with them, but it kind of boils down to they're either too automated and so I just kind of fell off of them and I just forgot to use them. Or they're overly complex or had features that distracted me. Then I fell off because of that. Again, I've tried things from Mint, which just recently shut down, all the way to YNAB, which this is the one I kind of, I think I lean more towards something like YNAB. Even YNAB was a little too complex and I ended up getting frustrated using it. That's the first reason. I genuinely need one and there just isn't one that fits my needs. Second big reason I'm building a budgeting app is there's a lot of things I want to learn from a technical and design perspective. Right now, my other project, Ellie, is just way too big to do that now. Like there's there's thousands of users using it. So I can't just mess around with the code base for fun to learn things because if I break something or if I make a bad change, it'll impact those users. And the app is just too big for me to kind of do that kind of experimentation right now. So that's the second reason. I need another playground for me to experiment and just grow as a designer and developer. And a new smaller budgeting app sounds like the perfect place to do that. What are my goals for the app? Do I want to make a million dollars with it? Do I want to sell it? Like what's the end game? Okay, if I'm being honest, I don't have any like monetary goals or anything. The only goals I really have with it are related to why I'm building it. Goal number one, is build an app that I stick with. And goal number two is learn a ton in the process. Those are honestly my goals for the app. So if it does those things in the next couple of months, then I'm super happy. I guess there is a third goal. Hopefully from a content perspective, the app really gets to showcase the beginning parts of building an app. You know, I'm documenting building Ellie and it's great, but one thing that kind of sucks is that I started documenting it halfway through building it. You guys didn't get to see a lot of the beginning parts of getting the first thousand users, really building it from scratch, doing all that stuff. And I get a lot of questions on my videos about how did I get started? How did I get the first thousand users? I guess the third goal will be to be able to showcase that beginning part of the app journey. And hopefully that inspires some people to get started or, you know, if you are starting just to not give up and you know push through. Okay, so what's gonna be different about this budgeting app compared to the other ones? I think there's gonna be two big differentiators. So differentiator number one is that this app is gonna be extremely well designed. Again, this is gonna be a playground for me to get good at interaction design, motion, animations. I'm going to pour so much energy into each of these screens and features and just the little details like deleting something. It's gonna feel so different from any other app. That's differentiator number one. It's gonna be super well designed. Differentiator number two, it'll be way more focused than the other budgeting apps on the market that are doing a thousand things and catering to a thousand different types of users, this will not be that app. I'm gonna make it so this thing does its job really, really well, which is to curb spending. Over time, that might change. I might start adding more features, but I'm gonna be really methodical about it where the, the core mission is to curb spending. It's gonna be hyper-focused. For people who need a system like that, that's gonna be differentiator number two. So where are we at with the app right now? I've actually started building it over the weekend. Everything is hard-coded, so it's not plugged up to a database or anything like that, but I'm basically designing the screen and all the little micro interactions. So my plan is actually to prototype the entire thing with Swift UI, build it here, hard code all the data so it's not plugged up to a database. And then when I'm happy with absolutely everything, then I'll hook it up to a database, then I'll build a backend, all the stuff you need to, for a functioning app. I've actually built out like three screens and a couple of interactions. So let me show you guys what I got so far. So right now I actually have the home screen built out. Again, this is like all work in progress, by the way. You can basically see all the different categories that you got. And then on the right, which is really cool, you can see how close I am at a glance to like overspending on something. And then how many days left are there in the month? So these are all just like things that I personally, like when I open the app, all the things that I wanna see. So this is the logo. Here, I'll put a bigger version of it. I'm I'm gonna get so much heat, I think, for this logo. I think people are gonna be so upset that this thing is like on the top left, just taking up space. I just like love looking at it, so it's gonna stay there. By the way, here's the app icon, um, which I'm absolutely in love with. Again, the app is named after my dog, who I love very much, so the more I can see her all over my screen, I'm very down for that. So really nice tab bars on the bottom. Typically, when you move between screens, the, the screens just change instantly within an app. When you move between the tabs, this is the first interaction I tried experimenting with, which was like kind of like a slide over type thing. 
page between the app, there's a slide over effect. This is not even fully done. This was just like a, a rough concept that I had. So it's kind of choppy. The directions aren't correct, but I think that it's really cool. Let me show you guys what the app that I'm modeling it after, which is called Family, which is a crypto app. It has nothing to do with the budgeting space, but this is, in my opinion, the most well-designed app I've ever seen. If you tab between their tabs, you can see the, the, this transition. I'm literally just studying these type of transitions to figure out why does theirs feel smooth? Why does mine not? So like just looking at it, one thing that I'm noticing is that, oh man, the top for them is static. So like the only thing transitioning is really that center. The next thing I'm probably gonna experiment with here, maybe putting something at the top. Like maybe I'll put the user's image, maybe I'll put the logo there. Like, I don't know, I'll put something there. And these are the type of experiments I'm doing basically. Like what will make this feel smooth? How can I try to match what these guys have? Here's another really cool interaction. If you go to the transactions page, swipe to delete. When you do swipe to delete on a typical app, Apple has some built-in stuff. So this is what it looks like. You guys have probably seen it. It's really clean, it's really good. I wanna see if I can do something similar to family's swipe to delete. If you look here, when you try to swipe to something, like, I don't know, it, like, you, you guys can't feel it, but there's actually also some haptics here. So like the phone's like vibrating a little bit, um, which feels super premium. So I decided to try to recreate this kind of something here um, with my delete. There's a ton of little details that are going on here. So one that's really cool is you can see that the delete's actually changing from orange to red as I'm swiping. Such a minor detail. So like when I first built this, I, it was just pure red. But then as I used it, I was like, why is this so different from these guys? Then I looked closely and I was like, oh my God, their blue is actually changing colors a little bit. So what if I did that? And man, that made such a big difference. So that's another example. Um, last example I'll show you guys. This is the new transaction screen. Again, not remotely done, like super work in progress. Here are two little details that I got um, from the Cash app. I notice like when you're typing on a pad, usually nothing happens to these numbers. I noticed Cash app, like it felt really nice to type um, on the Cash app. And they did two things. They added haptic, so it vibrates very gently when you type, which feels so nice. You can't feel it here, but that's what's going on. And then the other thing is, I noticed the number kind of comes up a little bit as you're typing on Cash App. So I started mimicking something similar here. If you look at the two, it just kind of pops up a little bit and then comes back down when I let go. Then the other thing, which is kind of cool, is if you look at the top numbers, um, where you can see the amount at the top, the numbers like come up from the top and then they kind of like bounce a little bit. Just such a nice touch. I, and I got this bounce effect like this kind of come up from the top from family. They do it so much better. I don't know why theirs is just so much smoother, but like I'm literally just gonna try to recreate as much as I can from these really well-designed apps as practice and just put it in this app. So these are some of the examples of some of the things that I was kind of experimenting with. And this is why I call this app like a playground. So imagine if the entire app is designed with these type of micro interactions. Imagine if you enjoyed using it and inputting a transaction in here. Personally, I feel like I'll have an easier time building the habit if I, it's an app that I enjoy opening and using. So that's what we got so far. We got these three screens right now. Um, so I'm gonna go build out the other screens and just like keep polishing, keep refining. Typically with an app, I would just stop. Like I would just use the Apple default deletion and call it a day, but um, again, since the goal is to practice and get better as a designer and, and push myself, I'm gonna spend the extra 50 hours on the deletion button, which again, makes no business sense, but for my goals for the app, which is to learn, it makes a ton of sense. Okay, so yeah, that's where we're at with the app right now. If you guys like this kind of content, I plan on making an entire series on YouTube, building out this app. You guys can see the journey from start to finish. You guys can see all the things that I'm learning. If you're interested in designer development, maybe there's some cool stuff you guys might pick up from these videos. So if you haven't, please subscribe if you wanna follow that. Also check out my Instagram and TikTok. I post almost every other day, um, building out these productivity apps and documenting my journey as a developer. So definitely go check those out if you guys are interested. This is the beginning of Luna budgeting app. I honestly don't know where the app's going to go, but hopefully the journey will be fun to watch. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.